Hi guys, welcome to the third and final part of my mini art omnibus series. This is my build of the military ambulance version of the omnibus. In a previous video we left the bus looking something like this, almost finished but with just a few additions and a bit of weathering to do. In this video I'm going to focus a lot on painting the 3D printed figures for the diorama, plus making a few additions to the base and a bit of mud weathering. So let's get going. In my previous video I mentioned the 3D files that I bought to print my own figures for this diorama. The link for those is in the description below. Here you can see the figures in the slicer software where I'm positioning them and rotating them and supporting them ready for 3D printing. The figures were printed on my Creality Halot 1 Plus printer. Again, link in the description below. This is a 4K resin printer which I've been using for a while now. And this is how the figures come out straight from the printer. And this is what it looks like with the support snipped off. There's clearly still a bit of cleaning up to do there, particularly on the underside of the helmet and around the face. But you can see the decent level of detail on those figures. I wanted to try a new technique, or at least a new technique to me, on these figures. This is the pre-shading and glaze technique which you might have seen on other channels. Night Shift, for example, does a great job on his figures using this technique. Basically, it involves giving the figure a coat of black overall, and then from directly above, giving the figure a thin coat of a highlight color, usually white or light gray. In my case, I used white, but I think in the future, I might use a slightly softer color as the transition between the white and the black is quite stark. Anyway, you can see that effect here on the figures, and hopefully that serves to highlight some of the details on them. For me, 3D printing these figures is a huge bonus because it's really difficult to find this kind of injured soldier figure in kit form. I know I could sort of kit bash some figures and, and customize some figures, but I don't really feel like I'm at that level yet. On top of that pre-shading coat, you apply light glazes of your top color, in my case, this is Vallejo English Uniform, which I've thinned down significantly with water. And I'm applying it here, trying to get it evenly over the figure and sort of just slightly, lightly discoloring the figure as I do so. Of course, the effect is going to be stronger on the white than it will be on the dark areas. It will need multiple coats, most likely at least three. And the trick here is not to let this pull in any of the uh, recesses, like the folds of the clothes or anything like that. It's not supposed to be a wash, it's supposed to be a glaze, which sort of stains the model. Here you can see two figures after the first coat. Already are looking pretty decent in terms of the variation in colour. Although I do think on the shoulders in particular, the highlight colour is a bit strong, especially compared to the trousers. Here are two more, and that's particularly uh, clear there, I think, on the shoulders of the left figure and the uh, knees and the legs of the right figure there. But overall, not too bad for my first attempt. I continued with three coats of the glaze, then I decided to move on to some of the other elements that the soldiers were carrying or wearing, and come back to adjust the glaze later, once I decided how it fitted in properly with the... Uh, the other painted areas. So here I gave a fairly thin coat of brown to the crutches being used by this soldier. Again I'm going for that kind of desaturated look. The crutches are slightly out of scale but nothing that worries me too much at the moment. Here's one of our figures with his equipment painted. You can see because I've used quite a thin coat on the equipment, certainly that bag there on his left hip might need a second coat. And I think I need to even up there the trousers compared to the jacket. They're just a bit too dark, so that might need another glaze on the, uh, the lower half of him there. Certainly on the thighs. I was aware that white would be a stark colour for the sling that this guy's wearing, plus of course it probably wouldn't have stayed white for long. So I mixed in a small amount of sand to give a kind of beigey colour and then I will dirty that up later on. With all of the accessories painted it became much easier to judge the uniforms. 
So for example, with this figure here, clearly there's a big uh, range of shades from very dark trousers to quite light um, jacket and particularly the helmet. I wanted to bring those together a little bit more. So now I could go back and add another glaze some variation is good, but I think it's just a bit too extreme in this particular case. This figure is another good example of that, where the front is very light in places a lot lighter than the other figures and a lot lighter than the back of the same figure. That might not be a huge problem because he'll be sitting down anyway, but still just bringing it back together, reducing slightly that range was probably a good idea. I think what I'm learning from this is perhaps white is not the best pre-shading colour, but perhaps a light grey or a tan colour even, and that hopefully should reduce those really stark areas. Still, it's all good fun and all good practice. Then came the dreaded moment to do the faces. I started out with a coat of base flesh from um, Ammo by Mig. It was quite hard to get the right consistency here. I didn't want the paint pooling in the mouth or the eyes for example, but also as I put it onto the hands it tends to be a bit too thin. Now here I made the classic schoolboy error of painting the entire face of a couple of figures in base flesh and then going back with the light flesh to do the highlights. And of course by that point the base flesh had completely dried and no blending was possible and it did not look good. As you can see, even with thinned highlight paint it's just not good. So I did a take two, I did a face in base flesh and then while it was still wet I immediately applied the highlight flesh, the light flesh. Now I'm not saying that looks good, but it does look better, I think. Finally, it was time to paint the boots. The reason I left these till the end was simply because that's how I was holding the figures while I was painting. And I took a variety of Vallejo model colours for the hair. These were mixed together in a palette to give everyone a slightly different colour hair. At this point the painting of the figures was basically done. So once the paint was dry, I gave everything a coat of VMS flat varnish. This really is super, super flat. Then I used Abtai Lung 502 sepia oil paint, thinned with odorless thinner, to give a wash to each of the figures. Of course, the idea here is that the wash will stay in the low points like the folds and add artificial shadows. This looks quite dark at the moment, but of course all these weathering effects dry much lighter. The final stage of weathering for the figures was to add some pigments to represent dirt. 
I did this with a dark brown pigment. I don't know the name of this pigment because the label has rubbed off. It's a little bit hard to see here because I've got this bright white background. But as you can see, I'm concentrating the pigment on the lower part of the boots and then moving it up, sometimes onto the trousers. I'm varying it between the figures so that not everyone has, for example, mud up to their knees. Some have a bit more, some have a bit less. With the matte finish on the figures, I find that the pigments don't need to be fixed. They just sort of ground into the texture. Moving back to the bus, there were a few details that needed to be added. Most obviously the glazing. Now of course half of the bus is covered in the wooden planks, but I do want some glazing on the other side so I can see inside. This was simply attached with some PVA glue around the edges, using that blue tack there to help guide it into place. I'm not super worried if I get fingerprints or even blue tack marks on the glazing, because I want it to be a bit, uh, bit dirty and I'm going to spray some dust and dirt over it anyway in a moment. At this point it was time to bring out this terrain base which I made earlier. I did a separate video on creating this and it was always intended for this ambulance. Now I need to make sure that the weathering I do on the ambulance, the bus, matches the weathering and the colours in particular on the terrain. Given the nature of the terrain I want to go for a drier, dustier look rather than a wet mud look. I started by mixing a combination of Tamiya XF52 which is flat earth with a small amount of XF19 which is light grey and giving a very light dust coat to the ambulance starting from the underside and of course making it heavier on the underside and i did make sure that i sprayed that over the windows as well just to take down that sheen a little bit and to make them look a bit um, well dirty i did want the interior of the bus to be quite dirty too to represent the fact that uh, dozens and dozens of muddy booted soldiers had been on and off it and it probably hadn't been particularly well cleaned. I started with this loose ground enamel effect, put it onto the bus neat, then took some of that same dark pigment which I used on the figures and applied it to some areas where the enamel effect was but not all. Once again this will dry a lot lighter than it looks at the moment. For areas like this I tried to keep the dirt to the centre where I figured that figures would be walking the most. Of course I left the top deck until last because that was the most visible and therefore I wanted to make sure I got the technique down by then. Again I put it down in the aisles and remembered to go into the uh, footrest areas between the seats and under the seats in front. This is what the effect looks like once it's dried, as you can see much much more subtle but still that nice uh, muddy colour variation going on. Arguably I could add even more than this. Here's the upper deck. I'm really happy with the mix of tones here, it just breaks up that uh, solid brown that we had on the wooden panels. It was a similar story for the exterior of the bus. I applied the enamel effect with a small amount of pigment 
making streaks downwards, sometimes feathering or thinning the edges with odorless thinner. Again, I've said it about three times in the last minute or two, but again, this effect will really um, subdue once it dries. To help blend it in, I then took some of the loose ground on its own, thinned it with a little bit of odorless thinner, and speckled it all over the sides of the bus. To a certain extent, it doesn't look like it's making much difference here, but it is just slightly changing the tone of the paintwork and adding those mud splatters. I also had these model scene paper flowers that I've had for a while. They're surprisingly detailed for laser cut paper. So we have the green paper for the stems, the separate red paper for the poppy flowers, and we even have a separate section for the, uh, the head of the flower. And in fact, we can even model some um, poppies that haven't quite opened up yet with these smaller flower heads here. I guess you could use these straight out of the box, but I airbrushed them on the sheet and then put them together. Finally, I got my 3D printer going again and I printed some of these tiny birds. They're so small it's really hard to focus on them. But you get a great example there of the detail that the 3D printer can reproduce as we've even got the feet visible on the, uh, the two birds there on the right hand side. So they'll be painted and one or two of them will be added to the scene. Here I was experimenting with how I might lay out those figures. Basically I want them queuing for the bus as it were, to get on the bus. But I also want to have a couple of figures already on the bus. And on that lower deck I've been a little bit cheeky and I've painted a couple of the figures twice and just use them in the lower deck there. I don't think it's light enough in the lower deck to realize that we've got the exact same figure inside and outside the bus, but it is light enough for us to see that there is somebody or something inside there. So it just gives that a feeling of sort of the bus being a bit full. Then it was just a case of putting the figures in the correct positions. and making sure that every detail was in place. So let's see the final result. And there we go guys, that was my build of the Mini Art 135th scale omnibus in the military ambulance configuration. I really love making this kit, I'm so glad that Mini Art brought this out and that they're not uh, shy of bringing out kind of unusual subjects for their, uh, their kits. It was great fun to build it, yes it was a bit fiddly in places and it was quite frustrating with some of those very thin pieces, but overall I think it's a really unique model 
and uh, yeah, maximum fun had making this. I think it looks really good on that terrain base. The figures I'm fairly pleased with. The uh, printing of them was fine, the Creality printed a great job. The actual 3D modelling of them wasn't fantastic. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers and there weren't really any other figures in this, these uh, poses that I could use. I think the pre-shading and glazing technique worked okay here. But again, I do have quite a lot of practice to do there to get that, uh, that really down to a fine art. Nevertheless, I'm really pleased with the final result. I hope you enjoyed it too. I want to thank all of you for watching and special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. These guys have watched this develop over quite a long time and uh, I really do appreciate all the feedback and support that they give to the channel on a, often on a daily basis. So thank you guys, it's really, really appreciated. If you would like to join Patreon or the YouTube membership schemes, then there are links in the description below. And until next time, I'd like to say thank you again to everyone for watching and have fun modelling.